that was the situation in the country. So since 1990, no preaching. Even I was in prison on Easter Sunday. Nepal wanted to remain a Hindu kingdom, so no foreign religions were allowed. As regards the history of the Catholic Church in Nepal, there are three phrases in the history of the Church in Nepal. From 1715 to 1810, when the Capuchin Fathers were here in Nepal, though the Capuchin Fathers left after the valley was conquered by the Shah kings, the, um, in 1768, there was one priest who remained here, Father Joseph Capuchin, and he died in 1810. So look upon that period as the first phase of the presence of the Catholic Church in the country. That's 1715 to 1810, that is 95 years. After the death of Father Joseph, the Capuchin, there was no Christian presence in the country. So for 140 years, Christianity was not in Kathmandu or Nepal because the first Capuchins came, made their home in Kathmandu. So after 19, 1810, there was no church personnel till 1947. In 1947, a Jesuit priest by the name of Father Moran was assigned to be the, by the Patna University to be the examiner of English at the Kathmandu, Nepal's only college, Trichandra College, examiner of English. When he came here, he, made, he was a very good PR man. He had a very good public relations. So he contacted the last prime minister and offered us services of the Jesuits in the field of education. Jesuits already known to be involved with education because we had a number of Nepali students studying in Darjeeling, in Patna, in Calcutta, in St. Javis institutions in India. So we were quite well known. So the invitation was, the Rana Prime Minister were happy to extend the invitation. But then, 1950, what happened? The Rana rule fell. It was the end of Rana, rule and the king took charge of the country monarchy monarchy was restored with the help of the uh, indian prime minister jawaharlal nehru so then there was a little doubt as to whether the invitation extended by the last pana prime minister would be reiterated by the uh, king king did reiterate a year later in 1951 he sent the education minister all the way to Patna to in, to, with the invitation for the fathers to come. Father Moran was very happy. He came and they were given the Godavari, the Prana Prime Minister's summer home, as a place to start from. So that was the place they were given. They had to walk all the way. That was a, so the second phase of presence of the Catholic missionaries began from 1951. And, but there were two um, conditions 
the king put to it that they were to preach, no, they were to teach, not to preach. Secondly, they could only operate in the valley of Kathmandu and work for the education of ordinary Nepalis. Why ordinary Nepalis? Because ordinary Nepalis with the Rana rule would not get education because the Ranas believe if you educate ordinary Nepalis, you make them rebels. So there was no education. The king wanted that the ordinary Nepali would be given uh, opportunity for education. And so education apostolate in Nepal began really for the ordinary people in 1951. From 1951 to 1984, Jesuits were involved in the education in the Valley of Kathmandu alone. So, in 82, 1982, King Birendra, whose family was totally uh, massacred in that uh, about 11 years ago, he went with his wife and uh, entourage to see the Holy Father John Paul II who is a saint now. Yeah? So the purpose of visiting the Holy Father in Vatican was to get recognition from Rome, from Vatican, of Nepal as a zone of peace. King was concerned about the future of the country. That this, this small country in the north, south and west has India as neighbor, and in the north, no, south, west and east has a India as a neighbor, and the north, China, Huge, two huge countries. They could swallow Nepal any time. So King felt if this was declared a zone of peace, there would be no possibility of them attacking Nepal or annexing Nepal. So when our Holy Father heard about it, he was very happy to grant that. But then when the decree had to be sent out, he realized there was no church present. Church was only three, four schools, one in Pokhara and three in the valley. Two for girls, two for boys. So a mission had to be created. So 1983, a mission was created called it Missio Sui Iuris, Mission in its own rights. And I was appointed as the first ecclesiastical superior of this mission. Nepal was a Hindu kingdom then, where preaching of Christianity was forbidden. You can even carry a personal copy of the Bible. Even police would go to each home and check whether they had Bible. And they, a lot of our Protestant missionaries were arrested and put behind bars. So that was the situation in the country. So since 1990, no preaching. Even I was in prison on an Easter Sunday. said mass in a village in Assyria. The policeman was there, also came for the mass, and uh, there were a number of people unvited, invited who had come. At the end of the mass, I was told, Sir, you are priest and non-Christian present. You must, this is not allowed in the country. You must come to prison with me. So that was the, uh, well, we, Father Miller was with me. So we went that day. We spent the Easter night in 
prison in Biratnagar till midnight. Next then we were released, but we had no Easter dinner, nothing of the kind. The priest was waiting for us in Damak. That was the situation in 1990, until 1990. In 1991, 1990, there was a democratic movement which was, was successful. In 1991, a new constitution was promulgated, allowing, respecting rather, the individual's freedom to opt for the religion of their choice. Huh? After that, Christianity really began to grow in the country. Before 1990, there were probably hidden Christians numbering about 30,000. Now today, we have Christian population in the country, about 2.5 million. This was a study research made by the Kathmandu Post, that the daily paper, five years ago, they went to every corner of the country to find out where the Christians were present. They found out that there were 2,500 church communities in the country. And the number today is too far, maybe it's more now, 2,000. So we are 2% of the population today. We were no one, nothing. Now we have, but as far as Catholic Church is concerned, we follow the instruction that of the king, the wish of the king. We never went out evangelically preaching aggressively uh, the gospel. But what this, when they saw us involved in service, of the people, they began getting drawn into the church. So as a result, this mission was begun in 1951 with four Indian Catholics, teachers who were involved with the Jesuits in uh, Godavari. And they were Indians. Now today we have Nepali Catholics, including some Indians, about 7,000 Catholics today. This increase has taken place without us really going out and preaching. But today, we can f baptize people left and right. There was one possibility one time you could be accused, so we made the people sign undertaking that I'm accepting this faith of my own free will. We don't have to do that anymore. Uh, this year itself, we have r roughly, probably, about 100 people, adults, have come enter the church during the Easter ceremony. So there is more freedom now. What the church is now doing involved is, we, though there were four schools when we initially, um, when I was assigned in 84, now we have 32 schools and there are three, four more under construction, educating 25,311 of uh, 14 students and um, in this, all these institutions, of whom 13,000 are girls. We feel the work of education is very evangelical because this is the greatest need, this is the greatest need in the country for the people. invited first of all by the king for this purpose. Secondly, there's a great need when you go travel to Nepal, you see our children going to the nearest school, walking. That is, wherever their school is, they have to walk to play. You, know? you see them on the street. The nearest school, they keep on walking to it. The hunger among the children are very great. Second reason. Third reason, that's the only way we can empower women. 
because women's education was frowned upon. So a lot of liberation that way has taken place, empowerment of women. Women are able now, a lot of people who have gone through education are now working for the, um, the empowerment, betterment of the women folk. Third, fourth reason, that's the only way we can fight against caste system. Because in our schools you find every caste group represented. We hope that someday this evil that is there, which we cannot fight directly, will disappear with our children accepting each other and growing with that acceptance. We hope they take some God's own good time, something will happen. So this is us. Then also in this, we are also involved in a number of social works. Among them will be chief will be the health work. Because health is a great need in the country. We have 18,000 doctors in the country, of whom 12,000 are working for the people in Kathmandu. a population of 4 million. And 26 million get only 6,000 doctors. So the, and these doctors don't want to go to villages. They go to places where towns and cities where there's money. So what we are doing today, we, do, we won't start a hospital, but we have mobile clinic for which we are helped by a gentleman from Singapore. So eight mobile clinics and the sisters go with this mobile clinic distributing basic medicine, imparting basic health care and uh, helping people if need be to go across to India if payment has to be made now and take taken care of. Then another thing that through Caritas we involved, whole country is divided into 75 districts. Caritas is involved in uh, working with the NGOs, village NGOs, in 60 districts of the country. Uh, that way we are known. And the Caritas it makes itself known by the work they do. And our priorities in Caritas is children and women. So this is more or less the work we are doing. We are also the first one to start work with the mentally and physically, physically retarded children, of whom we have about 1.5 million people, about 10, 15 to 20 lakhs children are there who are mentally affected. This work was begun by a priest in 1979. And this number is, uh, we have about today 150 or so that under our care. The biggest number is in Kathmandu here, daycare center. So this work, and we also started uh, with the help of Mayanul Fathers, a uh, place for the mentally deranged individual in Nayapati. These are some of the works that we have been doing. This is the church. Mm -hmm.